Hi, my name is John Yao, and I curated the exhibition, The Unseen Professors, which focuses on the sculptures of Leo Amino, Minoru Nazuma, and John Pei, three Asian artists who were born in Taiwan, Japan, and Korea between 1911 and 1937, and immigrated to America. Eventually, all of them moved to New York City, where they worked and taught for many years in leading institutions such as Cooper Union, Pratt Institute, and Columbia University. Despite belonging to different generations, their teaching careers overlapped for more than a decade, 1964 to 1977, during which time a generation of artists associated with minimalism and site-specific art gained much of the art world's attention. During the period in which they were teaching and exhibiting, both here and abroad, the following essays were published, Specific Objects, 1965 by Donald Judd, and Sculpture in the Expanded Field by Rosalind Krauss in 1979. Neither of them mentions a single sculptor of color at a time when there were almost no critics of color who could offer an alternative vision to their influential viewpoints. By gathering together a group of sculptures made of different materials and using different processes, wood, polyester, resin, marble, granite, and steel, this exhibition demonstrates that there was a group of artists who had roots in other histories and other philosophies than the ones that were narrowly defined by Judd and Krauss. John Pei was born in Seoul, Korea in 1937, shortly before World War II. In 1948, shortly after the war, he and his family immigrated to the United States. His parents then returned to Korea to fight for liberation, and he grew up in Wheeling, where he was first recognized at the age of 15 with an exhibition of his art at the Ogle Bay Institute. John Pei then went to Pratt Institute, where he became the youngest ever professor. His major work is done in short rods of steel, which he welds together to make sculptures. They are, in effect, three-dimensional drawings that occupy space. And with this material, which he limited himself to throughout his career, a short rod of steel, he made many, many different kinds of sculptures and worked in different ways that he was drawing an object in space. In his sculptures, he works primarily with a steel rod of certain lengths that he decides beforehand which he then welds together to make a three-dimensional drawing in space. In contrast to other artists working in steel, Pei believes that steel is a liquid, not a solid object. Visual contrast between his work in Caro and Smith is that his work is open and airy, and it has a kind of delicacy that you would not associate with steel. I find this to be very important. Leo Mino was born in 1911 in the then Japanese colony of Taiwan to an Ikebana artist's mother and calligrapher father. At the age of 18, he moved to the United States on his own and lived in California for six years where he briefly attended San Mateo Junior College. After that, he moved to New York City where he attended classes briefly at New York University. He studied direct carving with Chaim Gross at the American Artist School in 1937 after he began teaching himself to carve wood at a job that he had. In 1946 and 1950, he taught at Black Mountain College where he had been invited by Joseph Albers. After that, Albers recommended him for a job at Cooper Union where he taught for 25 years from 1952 to 1977. 
After Pearl Harbor, he was asked to translate for the U.S. Navy. During that time, he became interested in the sculptural possibilities of polyester after the military had declassified it. This transparent, malleable qualities inspired his forays into resin sculpture, making him one of the earliest artists in the United States to work in plastics. This use of plastic, of something that light could pass through, allowed him to explore color and light in a way that goes beyond the work of Joseph Alvarez, but continues the constructivist tradition. The fact that he used plastic early on, long before others in California and New York did, has never been fully recognized. Minoru Nozuma was born in Tokyo in 1930 and studied at Tokyo National University of Fine Arts and Music. During his time that he was living in Tokyo, he gained some reputation as a sculptor but felt that he could not get a larger attention because of the Japanese art world and moved to the United States in 1959. He joined the Brooklyn Museum Art School in 1964 as a teacher and slowly began making a reputation as a man who worked in stone. His work was included in the new Japanese painting and sculpture show at the Museum of Modern Art in 1965-66. By 1973, he had shown two Whitney Biennials, the 67 Pittsburgh International and at the Solomon Guggenheim Museum. Throughout his life, Nazuma worked in series, mostly focusing on refining and iterating a single form over the course of several years. His best known series is The Castle of the Eye, which is a cube carved into with receding spaces. Another series focuses on waterfalls and is aware of the blue veining on the white marble in relationship to the form. This awareness of both the surface and the material seems to me to set Nizuma's work apart from other sculptors working in stone, particularly because it adds a note of delicacy to the work, as well as the fact that water is a falling liquid form, which is contrary to how we think of stone's identity. By making the stone evoke something moving, he does something quite different than other sculptors working in the same material. Although these three artists did not know each other and work separately and independently for mainstream art, all of them took something from the different cultures, backgrounds, and art history that they were engaged with and made something fresh. This freshness, I think, has not ever been fully recognized, and I think it's time that it should be.